Hey everyone, it's Melissa with The Creative Season and welcome to 2022, our first project of the year. So I am just feeling very slow and quiet and hopeful. And so we are starting out with a very light watercolor sketch of this really lovely bunch of daisies I picked from my grandmother's yard with her blessing, of course. In fact, it was her suggestion, but I include that and um, a cup of coffee with some little words. We're not even going to do lots of layers. We're basically doing a lovely wash, some sketching, some color. You'll need four colors. You'll need a brown, the light yellow. If you have a lemon yellow, that would be perfect. A cobalt or a cerulean blue and a little bit of green and come sketch this really fun watercolor sketch and let's just start the year really lovely and slow. Happy New Year everyone. Hey everyone, welcome to the first YouTube video for the creative season for 2022. We are going to make a really happy painting today, which might seem a little bit odd considering that for most places here included in Northern California, it is dreary and and just overcast and the weather is cold and terribly just cold and wintry. However, I was over at my grandma's yesterday and she has these daisies that she told me she's go out and pick a bunch. Um, I don't have any where to transplant them, but I could certainly bring them home. And these beautiful daisies are just blooming in her backyard. She has, I think, four daisy bushes and it has been freezing. Like we've had temperatures in the 20s at night she lives about an hour away from me, and yet they are thriving every time I go over. So I thought, you know, there is a lesson here. There is just an, a word of encouragement. Sometimes after the holidays, um, you know, we just clean up Christmas and all the things, and it's wonderful to clean up, and yet it always feels a little bit empty, right? It just, after all the lights, I miss the lights the most. So I thought, okay, let's infuse some light, some color into our week here. And so I am also using a... This was a piece of paper that was, um, you can see the uneven, it was a bit of a, um, a leftover and I don't like wasting the watercolor paper. So I had done one on here, a really loose sketch, but then I went and trimmed, I have about a six by nine piece here. So you can do a smaller, um, piece, use a smaller piece of paper or you can use a larger one, you can leave out the mug, but I thought, you know what? Um, I got received several mugs for Christmas and I thought, we'll just put a little bit of letters, whatever you might need to hear today. I wrote, hello sunshine on mine, but let's go ahead and get going and create this really fun sketch. It's not going to take us very long. We're not going to do all of the um, details together because I thought, you know, you can either do a, just an initial sketch or you can do the whole thing with me, you know, do, do additional uh, layer layering. So I'm going to go ahead. I am just going to go ahead and make my little vase really quick. And I have all my daisies in a salad dressing vase. You know, one of those vases where you get the Italian dressing packets and you get the vase. Um, and so that's what I have. And I am using a micron pen today because, I, again, this is going to help us move a little bit quicker, especially if you are in the middle of cleaning or you just have a few minutes between work and getting dinner ready or maybe before work, however you're going. So I do want to make sure that we have the whole vase in here. Um, I note I'm going to actually have my petals coming out. So I'm going to pull up one of my flowers right now and you can see all of the how we have all the daisy has this beautiful all like all the dots and they just are almost like bunches and bunches of little little dots so don't be afraid to just make dots look at the edges of those the daisy petals they all kind of come to a little bit of a point but they're also very very uneven you know the daisies just kind of do their own thing and I am going to go over my vase, so if you're using pencil, you will not have made that mistake that I just did. You'll see in this one where I remember to just do the little bit of my vase and not sketch that in, but not a big deal here. Our daisies, they are really happy. They're very happy, and the petals are very just exuberant. So I'm going to extend the, the little face all the way out and then start sketching in. We're going to just look, I'm going to look at my daisies here, and I've got several in front of me, and you can either copy along what I'm doing. I've got one where we have almost a side view of its sweet little face, so I have the little stem going out here, and then the petals extending, just like so. And I am using the Micron pen to do a loose sketch. I'll end up adding in more petals, and I will also 
probably change the shape a little bit because I usually do that. One of the things I like about daisies is they just seem to be happy just being themselves. They are not really perfect per se. Oftentimes the daisies, they, they're not all uniform. You notice they kind of don't stick together. There are some, they're all kind of separate petals and then you'll have like clumps of petals and then you'll have one that's doing its own little thing. And on this one, we'll create a stem here and here I've got this one super happy I'm gonna be annoyed at myself that I drew that line in but you know what we are just going to keep moving on okay I've got one right here so again I'm going to just sketching with the micron pen and one of the reasons I like to sketch with the micron pen with this one is that we really are gonna make these very very yellow it's not like sunflowers where they have a lot a lot of different yellow shades and oranges this is almost an obnoxiously, in a wonderful way, yellow, right? So that is how I'm going to create these. Now, let's go ahead to and sketch in our mug. So if you have a mug in front of you, you can use that. I did have a tea mug, and I think I put it back in the kitchen. I was drinking tea this afternoon. So I am going to just make my mug here, creating that. We're going to go ahead and create my, my handle over here having it come out and around. We've got the top and then it disappears in the back and then comes on reaching back into the muck. And we'll have the, our vantage point we maybe would just see into it if it was just the tippy tippy top. And you can certainly put a tea bag if you wanted to do a tea bag hanging out. I am gonna go ahead and write my Hello Sunshine right here in the corner. Okay. Let's get our horizon line in there. So that's gonna help to ground everything, right? We'll do some shadowing. Also, let's make sure we include our stalks of the beautiful daisies and they do not have to match and you just can kind of make, I usually like to have one of them at least kind of crisscrossing. And at the bottoms, I'll show since they have the uneven where I cut them. Now down here, I'm not even looking in the camera, so I'm certainly hoping, okay, good. You, I'm gonna come in just a little bit. I am gonna go right like, see right here? I mean, wanna just make sure, just like in our vase here, that you can see that circular part, since we do have water. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my water circle here. Okay, and so, sorry, the battery died, so we are back refresh battery. So I was just saying that we want to make sure that we're going to show where our water is in this face. And I'm going to show you how to make it look like it's water in there without it getting too complicated. Now, one of the things I notice that happens with me is that when I'm working on a smaller piece of paper, my flowers sometimes do get to be a bit cramped. So I just am going to go ahead. I'm going to have another one coming out on this side, even though I know it's going to get cut off. And I'm going to have one coming up here so I'll put a stem here and just expand it out a bit so they're not I mean I will they are cramped in a good way because that's how daisies are but sometimes you just might want to spread them out a little bit more on the page and don't forget to just keep your eye on what they actually look like notice the length of these lovely flowers notice how a lot of them too they almost look like they have those lines going deep in there and while I'm sketching quickly feel free to take your time if you really enjoy that sketching part and let nope I'm on this particular one I'm just going and adding in those lines and I'm going to bring it up oh, I'm so sorry let me move this up just a little bit and I really don't mind that my flowers don't look like a formal bouquet if you know what I mean I am not so concerned about that this particular kind of daisy has no um, leaves on it I was just picking the, the the daisies this one there was leaves on there but I didn't pick any daisies with leaves the, the leaves were on separate branches so I'm not going to be too bothered by that I'm actually just going to go ahead and I'm going to do another little one with maybe its head up to the side, the, doing kind of almost a side view here. That looks really lovely. And having them come off the side. And now I am ready. That looks really fun. I'm going to maybe do another one right here just to make it look nice and full. And this particular breed of daisy, I'm not quite sure what kind it is. But it, again, a lot of the flowers, they're kind of bunched up or they're separate petals. So we're just gonna go with that. And again, I am doing lots of little 
dots to emphasize all of the different um, seeds in the middle of the daisy face. Okay, so now that we have that, that is looking really fun and I really love this. We probably have another face sticking out right here because a lot of the daisies were getting kind of collapsing on themselves. I have put quite a few into this cute little vase. So I'll do another one just like that. Again, making sure I am actually creating that cute little end that is distinguishing of this, one of the distinguishing characteristics of this flower. So now that we have that, we're gonna do a couple of things. So first off, get go ahead and grab the biggest brush you have. The colors we're going to use, we're going to use a cerulean blue. We're going to use, um, if you have lemon yellow or and or a light cadmium, um, we're going to use that. We're going to use a green and a bit of brown, and that's it. So grab your cerulean blue and get it really, really light. So if you see right here on my edge here, I've actually gotten a bunch of water, so there's hardly any blue. I'm going to add more water, and then I'm going to go ahead almost like... Um, I'm not even, I'm going to go around the flowers, but like there's a wind coming through and I'm going to not quite touch the edges. I'm going to come over here on the other side. Really, I'm just, cre I don't want there to be a stark white on the background, but I also, because this is a watercolor sketch, I don't want to saturate the paper either. This is more of a fun watercolor exercise. Maybe this year, one of your goals or your ideas, hopes that you have for yourself is you just want to do a little bit more art. You want to brush up on some skills or you're just playing a bit more. We're going to do the same behind our, our, um, our mug. So once again, almost as if there's a wind going through. And that's all we're going to do right now with that one. We're going to come back and use a little bit more blue. Okay, now that we have that done, let's go ahead and next, while we're letting that blue just dry just a little, little bit and make sure it goes to the edge. I'm gonna just brush this up to the edge. It doesn't need, you'll notice there's different shades of blue. That's fabulous. Now go ahead and grab a smaller brush. You might have a size four, a six, an eight, it doesn't matter. Um, and make sure it's a round tip though. So we have that nice round tip and start creating the dots inside. We are gonna create that sense of um, all of the hundreds of seeds in the middle that scatter. And then I believe they're gonna go make new daisies, which is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Such a happy flower and so low maintenance, easy to grow, content in all sorts of climates, including super hot ones and apparently fairly cold climates too. Um, speaking of goals, I mentioned goals. That might be your thing. I will be honest, I love goals. I'm usually the person with all the goals right out of the gate. And I got to tell you this year, I'm just not, it's coming slower this year and I'm just going to be okay with that. So wherever you are, perhaps you've got lots of plans for the year or you're maybe more like me and you're like, I don't, I'm still kind of listening, waiting, not feeling the urge to jump in. It's all, you know, sometimes some years you just need to kind of rest into the winter and start slow wait for the spring to pop out. Now I have coffee in mine. I'm gonna pretend that this is coffee, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put in, and it must be to the tippy top, I'm gonna to go ahead on the end here and fill in my cup, get a little bit more brown, just dab that in there. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab some yellow. I have on mine, I have lemon yellow here. This is a cadmium yellow medium, and that's a cadmium yellow light. So I would prefer if you have the lighter, the better. If you have, but if all you have is like a kind of a, your basic yet cadmium yellow, go for it, a medium hue. That will be just fine. Um, but notice too, I'll put one of the daisies to make sure you can see them, how yellow this flower is. It's very, very yellow. And I think that's what really grabs grabs my attention when I go to my grandma's is against everything else, which is basically either gone to sleep for the winter or we've got like the evergreens out there, um, the evergreen trees. We have these bright yellow daisies that are just having a party in the middle of the freezing weather and the literal freezes at night and all the rain that we've been getting, they are out there thriving, living their best life, which is, I think, just really phenomenal. Okay, so you can tell I am going fairly lightly. I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can kind of see where we're starting to move through here. I'm gonna move this up 
just a little bit because I want you to see everything because I'm going to come back in a little bit more. Again, I'm going to pick up some more yellow. If you want to mix the two yellow, a couple yellows together, that works too. Now in our patch, we'll kind of add colors and let them dance. We're not going to do that so much here because, again, it's such a bright yellow flower. If I do anything, I'm just going to get a little bit of a darker yellow and let that mix together. If I added like an orange or a pink, that that's fabulous, but then I think it really just takes away from that, that very um, distinguishing, I'm a daisy, right? I'm a very happy daisy. If your brown though gets in a little bit, that's not gonna be a big deal. It's kind of almost starts to look like a shadowing. So again, you notice I'm not too worried about staying in the lines because the sketching was just meant to be an outline. All right. And I'm going to come over on this one, the flower that is coming off the edge. I'm going to make these, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger because I just, I don't know, these daisies are encouraging me to be a little bit more exuberant and just embrace this day and this life as it is, no matter what's happening. Maybe that is the, maybe that, let's add some water to that brush, but no more color and then come over here and just do a wash over your mug. Maybe that is the um, the lesson of the daisy. No matter what's going on, keep smiling. Keep your eyes up. I think that's a good lesson. Okay, so you can see this now too. I have just done a little bit of color here. Now let's, without even rinsing your brush, you could just go get some more brown and then let's create the shadowing right underneath our cup. We're just going to do a brown shadow. There we go. Add a little bit of water if that was feeling a little bit dry. We want the deepest color to be right underneath. You can see that, okay, good. Right underneath, back that up here, the mug and the vase, and then for it to fade as it, the shadow gets a little bit farther out. So we'll just add a little bit more of that in. I'm gonna come back up here with that brown. We're gonna dab a little bit more color. Again, these aren't sunflowers. We're not trying to make them real, real bright. I'm a real bold with that contrast. Okay, now I'm gonna get another, let's go pick up some green. So do rinse your brush and then just pick up a green, whatever green you have. I think I have a permanent green, but if you have a hooker's green, or if you have um, a, a warmer green, that's all gonna be fine. And see what that did. I don't want that to happen, so if you find that your green gets too close to the yellow, just take a paper towel and we'll just dab the whole thing off. But what I wanna do is I wanna create those stems, so right over here, that side view of this guy, and I'm gonna go ahead and go down, and this, I have a bit too much paint on here, so I'm just gonna wipe that, and then pick up the excess and bring this down, and then start moving down on all my stems in the vase. And we're just moving this down, and it does not need to be straight lines. The stems on the daisies are quite thin, and they're not, in, they have a little bit of a bend at the end, so if you wanna create that bend, a gentle bend at the, the end of them, that works out beautifully. I have this one going across. I'm gonna come back up here, and the stems that we can see, I am gonna go ahead and add some green here, so our daisies are not floating in midair, right? They all have, they have a, they have a belonging here, okay. Okay, so that's looking really, really nice. Let me back that out so you can see the whole thing. Now I need to come back here and pick up some more yellow. Rinse out the green really well so that the green doesn't mix with the yellow on your palette. If it does, pat it down with some paper towels like mine just did. I patted it down, I'm gonna go pick up some yellow here. I've got lemon yellow now on here and I'm just gonna come back in and I'm really gonna go around my head. I wanna make sure that it's nice and yellow all around here. So moving this in, and again, they're not sunflowers, we're not trying to keep create a real bold face here. And really we're coming to the end, because if you wanted to let this completely dry, then go over with more micron pen for more details and add in some more colors in another layer, you certainly could, that would be fine. I'm actually gonna come over here on my mug, we're gonna add a little bit more color here. I'm gonna pick up a tad bit of brown, just, again, this is super loose. Okay, now, go ahead and get, rinse that brush really well. For our final um, addition here, we're gonna create that water inside of here. So, we've done a pretty light job. This is pretty much dry. So just touch your stems, make sure they're mostly dry. 
go ahead get your brush super wet pick up and I'm going to show you here with my I am literally picking up a little bit of blue I am hardly picking up anything it's very very watery because water is pretty transparent but we want to make that effect of water so right wherever your water tip is we're going to just do a glaze and just pull down that clear area and if you can see if you need to pick up a little bit more grab a little bit more and then go on the bottom and there we have our water without it really discoloring or looking really different okay super super easy super light you can do a lot of things if you are in if you love journaling this would actually be lovely you could create a beautiful journal entry with this which would be really really nice um, we've kept again kept it very very simple i could certainly come in so for example with this other one that I'd, i could come back in with my micron pen and i don't want to i could easily come back in and just start adding in more details you know can make lots and lots of little dots and just really create another layer and it would add a more depth to it so certainly feel free just how you're feeling you may just have enjoyed doing something super light you may want to do several of these um, possibly for some gifts if you have birthdays coming up um, or even for a journal different cup projects i'm going to be showing you what how i incorporate some of my watercolor into different projects but i hope you enjoyed this i am losing my son like it's overcast and i think even that is going away so i'm going to say goodbye this has been lovely, and I will see you next week with a new watercolor floral project. Take care, everyone.